in relationship to his devotees. Krishna gets a lot of pleasure from the service of his devotees. And when his name is called or, or calculated or known in relation with his devotees, then he gets transcendental pleasure from that. We're not the only ones who get pleasure from Krishna's service. He also gets pleasure. In fact, his pleasure comes first. Uh, when we put Krishna's pleasure first, that's devotional service. When we put our pleasure first, that is, at best, religion uh, or liberation. But when we put Krishna's pleasure first, that's devotional service. And when we don't have any other desire, that's pure devotional service. So the examples in pure devotional service are Krishna's eternal associates. His mother, his father, his friends, huh? gopis, his servants, the cows, other animals of Vrindavan. So yashomati, huh? yashoda mata. Mother Yashoda, Yashomati Nandana, is the son. Uh, like Srila Prabhupada says, when we want to identify someone exactly, we say his name and then his father's name or his mother's name. Uh, Yashomati Nandana, the son of Mother Yashoda. Well, there's only one person who has that designation, and that's Krishna. Just like when, we, when we're um, offering arti to Nitai Gora, we sing Nitai Goranga, Nitai Goranga, and then we sing Yashomati, uh, sorry, uh, Sachi Nandana. Yeah, Sachi is Lord Chaitanya's mother. Just like Krishna's mother is Yashoda. So Sachi Nandana is Lord Chaitanya. Similarly, Yashomati Nandana. Then Braja Baro Nagar. Well, there's no getting around it. Krishna is a, a young boy, and what are most young boys engaged in doing? Chasing young girls. <laughs> so Krishna is also <laughs> like that. But this pastime is transcendental. Huh? Braja, Braja means Vrindavan. It means the transcendental realm or the abode of Krishna. And uh, Bara, uh, Braja Bara, means the lover. He's a Nagara, he's a street boy, <laughs> a village boy. Uh, Nagara means street. So he's hanging out in the streets with the, with the young girls. Huh? But this is what young boys do. I mean, that's just the way they are. Right? <laughs> Krishna is the original teenager. Huh? But he's not a rascal. Well, he's not a, he's a, he's a transcendental <laughs> rascal. So uh, we get a lot of pleasure out of teasing Krishna about this. But actually, of course, the service of the gopis to Krishna is just incomparable. So uh, we'll talk about that. Gokula Ranjana. Gokula Ranjana. Gokula means the, uh, the abode of Krishna when he appears on this planet. Goloka is the same abode in the spiritual world. But Gokula is when Krishna comes to this earth, he manifests a projection, like a miniature um, part of his eternal abode. And he displays his pastimes in that place. Then, when he goes back to the spiritual world, that uh, manifestation of his abode is withdrawn, leaving kind of a shell behind. And that's the present day Vrindavan. Um, so he's the delight, Ranjana, the giver of pleasure. Huh? Ranjan means pleasure. Gokula Ranjana. Kana. Kana is like a very intimate, friendly name of Krishna. 
Kana. Just like we named Kanai. It means Krishna's Krishna's friend, huh? Krishna's servant. Kanai. Belongs to Kana. Gopi Paranadhana. He's the wealth of the lives of the gopis. Dhana means wealth. Huh? Parana means life. And gopi, of course, are the young cowherd girls. Krishna doesn't appear in a royal family. Well, he does in his Vasudev form. But then he immediately changes to his Krishna form. Huh? He goes to Vrindavan. And he is, uh, so to speak, adopted by Nanda and Yashoda. But actually, the, the Brijbasis know, the, the residents of Vrindavan, they know that this is Krishna's real eternal form. And his other form of Vasudev is a more external form. Uh, his form as a great king is well known to the public. He speaks Bhagavad Gita in that form. Uh, he fights in the battle of Kurukshetra in that form. Uh, that's a more of a public, well-known form of Krishna. But the, uh, the Krishna form, uh, the form in Gokula, is very confidential. It's only known to his intimate devotees, his intimate friends. So that form is the gopi paranadhana, the wealth of the life of the gopis. Madana manohara. Huh? He, he steals even the mind of Cupid. Uh, Cupid is supposed to be very beautiful. Cupid is supposed to be like the, the source of the uh, urge of love. Huh? If Cupid hits you with his arrow, then you're finished. You're gaga. You're like, ah. Huh? So, um, but Cupid is nothing compared to Krishna. Krishna is so attractive. I mean, you just can't imagine how attractive Krishna is. He's just pure beauty, pure love. I mean, can anyone describe Krishna? Not really. Still we try. <laughs> and one of his pastimes is Kaliya Damona Vidhana. He uh, punishes the Kaliya serpent who poisoned the Jamuna River and made some of the cows fall ill and like that. So uh, Krishna is always protecting his devotees. You see, all these names are in relation to his devotees. Either Mother Yashoda, or the Braja Baros, or the, the inhabitants of Gokula. Kana means, Kana is some name that the gopis call Krishna. Uh, gopis are Krishna's best friends. And so on. Amala Harinam. Uh, Amiya Vilasa. That uh, these holy names of Krishna are just full of transcendental ecstasy, sweetness. I mean, you, you can't know how wonderful Krishna's holy name is until you actually taste it for yourself. You have to try it. You have to taste this holy name. And when you do, then you will know what sweetness really is. Huh? Even when you chant the holy name of Krishna, and then you remember it later on. It's just as sweet, or maybe even sweeter in a certain way. Uh, I can remember chanting in Hawaii. I still look back on it with great affection. And I remember even after chanting 64 rounds or more, then I would stop you know, and, and take some rest or something. And I would be lying there in my tent thinking about the day's chanting and getting so sweet a taste. Uh, you can't imagine how sweet unless you actually taste it. Uh, everybody wants to relish some sweet taste in life. Uh, 
And so people try to get money, they try to get possessions, power, sex, different material possessions and stuff. But none of that has the sweet taste. It, can, it can't even match the shadow of the sweet taste of the holy name. Because the, the holy name is unconditional. You can taste the holy name any time. In any condition of life. Uh, anyone. Whether they're educated or not educated. Or whether they're rich or poor, beautiful or ugly. There's no conditions for tasting this sweetness of the holy name. It's not like anything material that requires you to be a certain way. Uh, Krishna is available to everyone. So why not take him? 